What you believe in is what you live in and the perspective you see from. When you believe in Christ and his word, you see from his perspective. Hey, babes, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you've been here for a while, welcome back. <laughs> so you guys, as you guys can read by the title, I am going to be giving you a testimony. One out of many, okay? But I just felt like this one was important because since releasing my video yesterday, I've been getting a lot of comments and emails about people and their views and their beliefs and everything like that. So what I do want to say, I am not here by any way, shape or form or form to convict condemn point fingers about your belief isn't right your you know like no the bible says we should not do vain battling so you know i'm just here speaking the word of the lord giving it to you guys how he has gave it to me i have got here by the holy spirit and by grace okay i understand it i am a living testimony that grace is sufficient in our lives all right so I'm just coming to try to like maybe help you guys get a better perspective or view on how grace works and you know how it has took place in my life. It's by the title, Homosexuality. Yes, I have been a part. I have had my phase in being in that life. I have dealt with females, multiple females. And I'm saying all of this to say that even in our sin, the Lord is with us. I am a living testimony. Whatever sin you are doing, whatever sin you are in, you are taking the Lord with you and doing this stuff, being a part of this stuff, okay? He will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says this. For the people who have been asking, have I been baptized and have I been saved? Yes. I was around 13 or 14. One of my old friend's sister, older sister, took us to get baptized. I don't remember the church. I don't remember the pastor. I don't remember the date, okay? I just know that I have been baptized before I was young, but I have gotten it done. Listen, y'all, listen. What I'm about to tell y'all, this is nothing but the Holy Spirit. This is nothing but proof that the incorruptible seed dwells on the inside of us. So as I was in this relationship, it was like a two and a half year relationship with this lady. We were together around the time where they just passed the same sex marriage law. Now, when I say, you guys, when they released that, I was not okay. Like, I was just like, listen, how dare they? How could they? Like, what? That's, that's mad disrespectful. But I'm sitting here in a whole relationship with a female, two and a half years, you guys. And when they passed this law, my spirit was not rocking. Like I knew that it was dead wrong. So this brings me to believe that people who are committing these types of sins and, you know, doing certain sins, you got the Holy Spirit in there telling you, like, you better go this way. This is wrong. This is right go forward go back in first john 2 20 it reads but ye have an unction from the holy one and ye know all things i knew that this sinful relationship i was encountering and involved in was dead wrong and i knew exactly that I knew it was wrong when they passed that law. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute. And I'm sitting here in a relationship with a woman. My spirit was not having it. So this goes to show that we know, like God made us free moral agents. He gave us the 
choices to choose, you know, decisions to choose. He's not forcing anything on you. But we do have the Holy Spirit unctioning us, telling us all things. 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Jesus. Even in my madness, y'all catch this. Even in my, if we go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. We know how the Lord feels about same-sex encounters, same-sex relationships. We see clearly how he feels about that. And I was in it, full throttle, in that. But the spirit in me knew that what I was doing was wrong. And by his grace and by his mercy and by his love, by me repenting and turning away from my wicked ways, the Lord forgave me. He was with me the whole time. He never left. He don't leave or forsake us. Y'all, listen. So I'm saying this to say, and I have a family bloodline of homosexuality, our women, the females having diseases. I'm, I have a bloodline of this. My mom's eight children, her daughters, all are homosexuals, you guys. All of them. I fell into that as well. But it wasn't from my mother going to the courts. It wasn't from my father going to the courts. It wasn't from them doing this long, drawn-out stuff. The Lord says, pray, lay it at his feet, leave it there, let him handle it, don't pick it back up. That's faith. Why? Because the Lord at the cross finished it. All of our sins, he finished it. And it's by grace that we turn around and we're here. It's by grace, y'all. It's nothing by what we do we did it's nothing about what i did no specific prayer i prayed so the comments i was getting you guys are saying that you know yes jesus died for our eternal life but we still have work to do on here on earth yes that's so true but we got to give him all his credit we got his, we got to give him all his parts all his piece to this puzzle he died for the whole world's sin you, me, that culture, this ethnicity, our ancestors, our grandkids, our future grandkids, the whole world, nobody is excluded. And if we don't go and break our ancestors' sins off, you mean to tell me that we won't walk into what the Lord has ordained for us? That their sins are so powerful that if we don't break it off by going to the courts of heaven, that we won't manifest what the Lord has for us and has called us to do, if we don't do that, it, that just doesn't make any sense to me. That contradicts the Bible. He died for our sins. Yes, we can renounce. I am an intercessor. I am called to intercede. Yes, I pray for the nations. I pray for my family. I pray for the bloodline. I pray for my sister. I pray for my brothers. I pray for kids that are sex trafficked. I, I pray for all of that. But I take it to the Lord and I lay it at his feet and I leave it there because I trust him. This dispensation is about trust and believing. If you're not under grace, if you're not working under Jesus, the finishing works at the cross, you're falling under religion. That's just what it is. 
You're falling under religion. It's not about works. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. He finished it. <laughs> Y'all. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 6, this is Paul speaking. He says, now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news of Jesus. I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as a first importance. For what I received, I passed on to you as a first importance. What is he talking about? The gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Y'all. Yeah. The gospel is of the first importance. Why? So that people can be free. We can be broken of bondages. Jesus have died for our sins. We don't have to go back breaking off anything. We have to give him more credit than what we do. Yes, for our eternal life, but here on this earth too. I was in sin, more than one sin. And by his grace, Nothing by what I've done, Not, none of my works, nothing that I did specifically got me here to this place. Nothing. It's by his grace and his mercy, which means not just eternally, but here on this earth is what it means too. Here on this earth is sufficient. It's now. I'm not going and breaking off curses of ancestors when he finished it at the cross. I, yes, I will speak life into my sisters, into my family. Yes, I will pray for them. Yes, the Bible says pray without ceasing. But we don't have to do all of this extra work that these pastors and our teachers have told us to do. Most of them that are teaching at these schools are not working from the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to say it like that. Just because you was taught by this seminar school does not mean who you was taught by was working out of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 27. You don't need anybody to teach you because you have the Holy Spirit. Nobody taught me. Me growing up, being in church all these years, they never taught me grace. I'm just now figuring this out. How? By the Holy Spirit. We got to give him more credit than that. We got to give him more credit than just our eternal life. Yeah, we got work to do here on this earth. That's praying. That's interceding. That's edifying the body. That's loving one another. We got to give him more credit. He died for our sins. The whole world. No one is excluded. Just because your bloodlines have this in them doesn't mean it's going to stop you from what the Lord has called. Not going to stop you from the will that the Lord has planned for your life. It don't work like that under grace. Paul says this is of first importance, the gospel. What is the gospel? That's Jesus. What did he do? Die for our sins. Y'all, 
y'all i just pray i pray y'all catch this you know it's okay that we wasn't taught this i wasn't taught this the holy spirit is giving me revelation and knowledge some days i'm like how do i understand this like how am i getting it like this like where is this wisdom coming from the holy spirit we don't have to work stop trying to work you can't do nothing stop trying to break stuff it's by his grace nothing you can do whatever the lord has for your life it's going to be done in jesus name all of those sins that i came from it didn't stop the will that the Lord had over my life. And I'm talking about sins after sins after sins. It didn't stop what the Lord has called me to do. It has not stopped. No bloodline, no curses, no homosexuality. It did not stop the will for my life. Why? Because of grace because of his love, because of his mercy. It's sufficient for right now, not just eternal, now. Paul says, this is of first importance, the gospel. And what do they teach under the gospel? Grace, love. Y'all, catch it, catch it. When I first started this journey, the Lord kept telling me, have a wavering faith, Jermica. You stand on what you believe in. You know, you be unmovable. And I kept saying, why do you keep repeating this, Lord? Like, why do you keep saying that? Because I get it now. He kept repeating that to me. Be unmovable. Stand on what you believe. Jesus, I get it now. I get it now. So I respect y'all comments. I respect y'all perspective. But if you're not under grace, if you're not putting this first, this covenant, you are under religion. You fall under religion. Jesus finished it at the cross. For you and I, the whole world, that culture, that race, our ancestors, our grandkids, our future grandkids, he finished it. Catch this, y'all. I need y'all to catch this. Pray without ceasing. You give it to him. You lay it at the throne and you leave it there. Don't keep picking it back up and no, doing all this extra drawn out stuff. It's done. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Y'all got to understand that. 2 Timothy 2, 24, 26, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. What is the truth? Jesus, grace. Know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Y'all, the truth, the way, and the light is Jesus. He finished it. He died for our sins, okay? all of our sins not just eternal sufficient for right now it's no ancestor it's no bloodline it's no curses that can stop you from the will of god none it's done i'm a living testimony i was in sin big sin but the unction of the holy spirit was always there guiding me. Jermica, no, this is not right. And it's out of people being rebellious and bitterness, unforgiveness, and a hardened heart that they continue to be in that sin. That does It isn't going to stop my sister or my relatives because I'm working out of a hardened heart and out of my sinful ways. 
I have to repent and turn from them. We have the incorruptible seed living on the inside of us, you guys. I did not want to make this that long. But I hope y'all caught this. I need y'all to catch this. Like, seriously, we can agree to disagree, but I'm unmovable. I stand on what I believe in. I'm not going to the courts. We don't have to go to the courts. Listen, you guys. Don't make this harder than what it has to be. He loved us that much. Grace. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I love you guys. I love you guys. I hope that you are blessed. I hope that you stay blessed. I hope that you guys catch this. Okay? I hope that you catch this. Go take it to your pastors and your mentors and ask them, what is this grace coming in? Like, give me more detail, you know? Like, don't skim over it. They they just skim over it without giving us the detail. Take it to them. Ask them about it. Ask Holy Spirit to give you revelation and knowledge. That's where I am. Nobody's teaching me anything but the Holy Spirit. So I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.